This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In the previous lesson, we used the organizer to open this camera raw file in the editor. Now, remember, you can also use File Open, click on any camera raw file on your computer or in your organizer, and it'll also open the dialog box. Because you cannot open camera raw files and work with them directly in the editor, you always have to go through the camera raw dialog box to do so. I'm going to just toggle this to full screen. There's a little toggle full screen mode button at the top so you can see everything. The dialog box is a very small, limited version of the editor. It's designed so that you can process camera raw files here, and then if you need to complete further editing or if you need to make specific targeted edits, you can open that file in Photoshop Elements. Now, there are a few tools in the upper left-hand corner that you should be familiar with. A zoom tool and a hand tool. This is very similar to the ones that you see in the editor itself. They allow you to zoom into an image by clicking or zoom into a region by clicking and dragging. The hand tool allows you to pan around your document when you are zoomed in. Double-clicking on the hand tool in the tools bar allows you to return your image to full screen mode so that it fits inside of the window. The eyedropper, we're going to use that in a second. It's a white balance tool. We'll talk about white balancing in a bit. You have a crop tool. It crops your image. You have a straighten tool. It's used to straighten and crop your image. There's a red eye removal tool a preferences dialog for the camera roll dialog box, and the ability to rotate images clockwise or counterclockwise 90 degrees at a time. Now, those are the tools that you have, and we're gonna use some of them, though not all of them. This image really doesn't need to be straightened per se, and there's no red eyes to remove. But we are gonna use the crop tool especially, and the white balance tool. Now, white balancing. If you look at this image, the colors may look fine. The picture is a cream color, for example and the background is a reddish burgundy color. Now, the only problem is, is that, well, I was there when I took the photograph, and these colors are completely off. That picture is not cream colored, it's actually chalk white. And that background should really be purple. What causes this? There is a technique in photography called white balancing. Basically, what it allows you to do is set a neutral white color for your photograph. Now, most photographers, and most regular people especially, don't bother to do this. What happens is when you make a JPEG file, that white color becomes embedded or compressed into the file. But with a camera raw file, since we have access to all the original data, we can very easily adjust that white point. This is what the white balance tool does. So third tool, the eyedropper. All you've got to do is take it, activate it, and click on an area of your image that should represent neutral white. Normally, you'll want to stay away from really bright highlights like here in the glass. And since this picture is white, I'm just going to go with a light area of the picture. And as I click, you'll notice that the colors adjust. Now, you can try different areas. So, for example, this is what a white highlight does. But really, I'm going to go with the picture right about this highlight area here should be good. And now what you can see is several things happened. One, the picture now actually is white, and that background is a deeper purple. This represents much better the colors of the original still life when it was shot. If you don't like what you've done, you can always click on any area with the white balance tool and the entire image settings will readjust. So if you don't like what you've done, try another area. But if you want to completely discard your settings, on your keyboard, for the Mac users, hold down the Option key, and PC users, hold down the Alt key. This changes the Cancel button at the bottom of the dialog box to a Reset button, which will reset everything back to the appearance of the image when it was opened. But like I said, I really want to set this to white, so I'm going to take that White Balance tool and click right here. The right side of the Camera Raw dialog box gives you the ability to control the settings of this image. If I had taken a JPEG image and did this editing in Photoshop Elements, you'd have most of the same settings. The advantage here is that, one, they're all in one place, which makes them easy to work with and control simultaneously. And because it's a camera raw file, I'm not actually editing any of the original data. 
I have a lot more data, a lot more information to work with. Therefore, it allows me to perform these edits in a non-destructive manner. Now, the white balance settings at the top allow you to set a color temperature and a tint. Light has a temperature. It's actually measured in degrees Kelvin. The temperature of the light equates to a specific color of the light. So lower values are blue, they're cooler, and higher values tend to skew towards the red and orange, and they are called warmer. You'll often hear artists and photographers talk about warm and cool colors. You have the ability to adjust the white balance so that you can fine tune it to create a custom color temperature. So you're not left to the color temperature that you shoot. You can adjust it. So if you want to, and I want to do this in this case, I want to make this image a little cooler. So I want to enhance the blues and the purples. Now, the tint slider is designed to fine tune your white balance settings. But really, it's intended more to correct for specific color casts, color overlays. Light isn't perfectly white, not in the real world anyway. Fluorescent lights, for example, tend to have a green tint to them. So photos taken under that kind of lighting situation tend to skew towards the green. Sunlight, on the other hand, tends to have a red or magenta color cast. So photos taken in direct sunlight tend to skew towards being a little too red. The tint slider allows you to compensate for this, to reduce the amount of red or green in an image. So you can neutralize a red color cast by sliding the tint slider to the left towards the green. You can neutralize a green color cast by sliding the tint slider in the opposite direction. But I'm going to return this to the value that was set by the white balance tool at 3, because this still life was shot under studio situations, so it wasn't using fluorescent lights, and it wasn't using sunlight. I'd also like to crop the image, and that's just a regular crop tool. I can click and drag with the crop tool and choose the area of the image that I want to focus on. Once you have released the crop tool, you can still adjust its corners and sides using the bounding box around it in order to better refine the area you want to work with. If your cursor is inside of the crop box itself, you have the ability to simply move the entire crop area around. Now, the crop area is visible here when I'm on the crop tool, but when I switch back to any other tool, the crop area is removed, and you can see that all we have is what was inside of it. Now, this is what's different between using the crop tool in the camera raw dialog box and using it in the editor. In the editor, that's a permanent change. But in the camera raw dialog box, you're never ever damaging or removing the original pixels of your image. So the crop tool can always be recropped. Like so. You can also clear the crop by right clicking inside of it and saying clear crop. But I want to leave it this way. I like this. I want to remove some of that extra drapery at the sides that wasn't really important. And I'll return back to the zoom tool just so I can see the effect of my crop. 